Hello, my friends, and welcome back to our GED and High Set Math series. Today, I'm going to teach you exactly how to read and follow the formula sheet for the GED test. Now, if you're taking the High Set test, I have a video just like this. I'll link it right up there for the High Set test. You're going to want to watch that video instead of this video because the two formula sheets are just a little bit different. Welcome to Purely Persistent, I'm Michelle. So this is the formula sheet for the GED test. However, because you're taking a computerized test or just a test that's on the computer, uh, it might look just slightly different. So when you're taking the test, there'll be like a little button at the top that says formula sheet. So you click on that and then the formulas will come down and they will provide you with all of these formulas. Now, notice at the top here how it says 2014. Even though it's not 2014, it's several years past, this test was sort of revamped for 2014 and they're still using the same formula sheet. Okay, so that's, that's what that means, but not too important. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this formula sheet and we're going to break it down piece by piece so that you have a really thorough understanding of each of the components that are on this formula sheet. Area. Okay, so notice all of these little A's here say area, right? So we're, I'm going to show you here how to figure out the area for all the different things. So we're going to start off with a square, right? A square is just side squared, okay? So let's say I have a side here, it's just giving me that one number and I just square it and there it is. So let's say side equals four, I would just go four squared equals 16 and that would be my area of the square. Rectangle here is very similar except it is length times width, okay? So I'm going to take the length, so the bottom, times one of the sides, and then I'll have my answer. One thing I like to do is I like to think of area like grass. So let's imagine I have a piece of property and I wanna put grass on this property. What I can do is I can take the length of the property times the width, and multiply those together and I'll have how much grass I need. So remember, area is the grass, how much you need, okay? This will be important for when we get to perimeter. Next we have here parallelogram. And a parallelogram is sort of similar to a rectangle. However, it's just a little pushed over. So I like to think that someone, or maybe the wind, took the top of the rectangle and blew it over so the, the side is pushed over but the bottom is still is still put, okay? So it's actually the same formula except for they're calling this base times height instead of length times width, but basically same formula. So triangle is, here we have our base and here we have our height. Now, one thing that's important with your height is you are actually not going to use one of these side angles. No, you have to use the actual middle part of the triangle that is, that's going straight up, okay? So just, just keep that in mind. Now, sometimes they'll provide you with this whole length, the whole base, and there you go, you would have your one half base times height. However, if they only provide you half, then you're gonna have to get rid of that one half because you've already topped it in half, okay? So just sort of be mindful in what they're providing you and the numbers that you're putting in. Okay, trapezoid. This is what a trapezoid looks like. So, it has the word trap in it, right? So I like to think that we have two triangles, right? Here's triangle one, here's triangle two. They're, they're exactly the same. And they have trapped in a rectangle, okay? They've trapezoid it in. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do is it's one half, uh, one half right here times the height. And the height is kind of like with our triangle, 
we're going to use a height that's like this, going up and down. And then we have base one times base two. So right here, this is base one, and the top part is base two. I don't know why they don't call it bottom and top, but clearly I'm not the one that was asked to create this formula. So base one is the bottom, base two is the top. Okay, now we have our circle here. To figure out the area of the circle, we have pi. Now, they might tell you what to use for pi, like 3.14. However, if they don't, here's your lovely calculator, and there's a little button that says pi. Now, speaking of calculator, I have an entire calculator video that is in your best interest to watch so that you can rock this portion of the test, okay? Then we have R. Now, R is radius, okay? So R goes halfway into the circle. However, maybe they'll provide to you the whole circle going across. The whole circle going across is the diameter. So if they provide you the diameter, you're gonna have to cut that number in half, right? And then just square it and you'll have your circle. Now we have perimeter. Now remember how I just told you the area is grass. How much grass do we need? Perimeter is the fence. Okay, you're not gonna put a fence on your entire property, right? Line the whole thing up with a fence. No, you're just going to take the fence and you're going to put it around the perimeter, around the outside. So the way to do this is you're just going to add up the sides, okay? So here I have a square. So I'm going to go, so I'm gonna add up side plus side plus side plus side. So let's say I, uh, I'm gonna say it's two. Okay, so I'll give each of these like a little two. So I just go two plus two plus two plus two. And so the perimeter of this square would simply be eight, right? Our rectangle is going to be the same thing except length times width. They have a little formula here, two times length plus two times width, or else you could just go side. You could just go length plus width plus length, plus width, and that would work too, okay? Triangle, just add up all the sides. So add up one, side one, side two, side three. And there we go. All right, now we have a circle, which is gonna be a little bit different because we can't just add up sides, right? So a circle here, we can do it two different ways. So they have here, we, the first equation here is two pi r. And notice here how it says use pi as 3.14. Okay, so I would just type that in my calculator, 3.14. So two times 3.14 times the r right here. Oh, but then look at this. Another option is if it gives you the diameter it's just pi times the diameter. So, depending upon what, what they give you is how, how you'll solve for that. And the perimeter of a circle would just be how long does it take, to, or how, what is the distance around the circle, right? Okay, so now we have here surface area and volume of a uh, whatever. So I'm gonna start with surface area now. I think that I could make an entire video on surface area. So if you want me to do that, uh, give this video here a thumbs up, okay? Surface area is simply, let's say I have a box and I wanna figure out how much wrapping paper do I need for the box. So let me open up my box, okay? And so um, I have a square box. And so think about like how many sides are on a dice. There are six sides and this has six sides. Okay, my box has six sides. So you're gonna have to kind of think in 3D here. Put your box all together. I really think a video on this would be helpful. But then what you have to do is you have to figure out the area of each of these different pieces and then add it all up together, okay? And so 
sort of using what we did before with area, figure out the shapes that you have here. Definitely make sure that you think in 3D, draw it out if you need to. I find that to be really helpful or maybe they'll provide a drawing for you, but think of each little part and calculating the area for each little part and then adding it up and that will figure out the surface area. So now we have here volume and basically volume is the what's inside. Okay, so let's say I have a box. How much do I have in the box? Or I have a cup of water. How much water do I have in my cup? Okay, to figure this out, so let's say I have a rectangular prism. So basically a rectangular prism is a fancy way of saying a box, okay? <laughs> or like an elongated box. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go length times width times height. Just multiply all three of those together. A right prism would be just the base area times the height, okay? Cylinder for our cylinder here. I'm going to take pi r squared and pi r squared, like we just did, is going to be the area of the circle, right? So we take the area of the circle and we times that by the height and that will tell me the area of an entire prism. Pyramid is just going to be, okay, um, I'm going to kind of, there's my pyramid. So I have to figure out the base. All right, so figure out that square at the bottom, the base times the height and multiply a third of that. And so there's my height and kind of like, a, like the rectangle or the triangle that we did before, a pyramid is going to have triangles. So you wanna make sure that you're not following the side angles, but that you're just following what goes straight up through it, okay? And so notice here, this isn't giving you everything because it's saying calculate the base. Same with this one, calculate the base of it. A cone is kind of like a pyramid, except instead of being a square base, you're going to have a circular base and a sphere, that's just a ball, okay? So we're just calculating, just follow the formula exactly and you need the, so it's four over three. So again, make sure that you know how to use your calculator so you can throw in that fraction, right? Four over three pi, which is 3.14, r, here's our r right here, cubed. And just know what each of these mean. I'll kind of practice a little bit and you'll be good. About 15, maybe 25% of the test is going to be statistics. And so here, they might be providing you with a bit of data. And so what you're going to have to do is figure out the mean and the median. Sometimes they might say mode or range as well. However, the formula sheet's not including those. So mean, I would say that's a fancy way of saying average. So take up all the numbers that you have and divide it, add them up and divide it by however many numbers you have. Median is simply the middle number. So let's say I have the numbers two, three, and four. Median, if I line them all up in order, median is going to be the one that's in the middle. However, let's say I have two, three, four, and five. Then what I have to do is I have to take these two and figure out the average of those two, which is 3.5. So then 3.5 would be the median for that number. Algebra, algebra. <laughs> Guys, most of the test is algebra and I do have a couple videos on that. So let's hop into sections of this algebra session. Okay, first we have a slope. Right up here is the video for slope. So make sure, make sure that you watch that, okay? So basically, M is the slope. Figuring out what the slope is, you take two different points and use that to calculate the slope. Okay, the slope intercept is where it crosses the y 
axis right here, this, this would be the y axis, so where it crosses. And notice, oh, what do we have right here? It's the m, right? It's the m from right there. That's the, that's the slope. And this here, point slope form of the equation of a line. Again, uh, check out this video and it'll help you answer that question as well. Now, you can count your blessings that you're taking the GED and not the high set for this right here. Okay, so the high set, they don't give you this. You have to memorize it. But on the GED, they don't. Okay, this is the quadratic formula. Best advice I have for you is watch this video right up here for the quadratic equation, the quadratic e formula. formula. Okay, I have a really handy way to help you remember it and actually use the quadratic equation. One thing though to keep in mind is it is a little bit tricky, okay? You're using a lot of algebraic concepts and remember you don't have to get all the questions right. Sometimes people are really overwhelmed by this and if, I, if you were to skip anything, skip this and get these questions wrong. However, in that video I mentioned I have simplified it quite a bit. Pythagorean theorem. I feel like I'm an infomercial just being like, hey, check this out. But literally, guys, check out this video right here where I go over the Pythagorean theorem with you. So basically what that's doing is we have a triangle and each different side represents a different number. And so here, let's say A equals two. Well, actually, I'm gonna say A equals three, B equals four, and I have to figure out what C is. I just go a squared, so I have three squared, plus b squared, which is four squared, equals c squared, and three squared we know is nine, plus four squared is 16, equals c squared, nine plus 16 is 25, equals c squared. To get rid of that squared, I can just take the square root, and the square root of 25 is five, so c equals five. This is like the easiest one of the Pythagorean theorem that you could possibly do. So that's why I did it for this quick example, but watch that video and you can practice a lot more that are quite a bit more complicated. Because when you take the GED, it's actually not gonna be as easy as this. They'll probably provide several different steps that go along with it. Interest, yay! Guys, this is what can make people millionaires, right? I have several videos on that, but on the flip side, it can also make people in major, major debt. But that's compound interest, and here we're talking about simple interest. So here I have interest equals P, or sorry, interest equals I. P is principal, so principal is the amount. So let's say um, I have $100 that I am putting in, we're gonna say that I'm putting in money, so I'm making money. So my principal is the money that I put in. The rate is the amount that, okay, maybe they're saying 10%, which would be crazy high for making money, but let's say it is. And then time, how long I'm keeping it in for. And then that is what, knowing the interest, I can figure that out. Or else you can figure out the rate, the time, that sort of thing. So. That'd be the interest, the amount of money that I made on that, okay? Distance is simply rate times time. And total cost is number of units times the price per unit. I think you know that, right? Let's say I am buying candy bars. Okay, each candy bar is $1. I buy 10 candy bars. One times 10 is 10, right? I owe dollars plus tax and that my friends is a formula sheet for the GED but remember it takes practice so now that you're a little bit familiar with it check out some of those other videos and practice 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 okay a lot of people find the math test to be one of the trickier tests but I have full faith that if you work really hard you can do this so make sure that you believe in yourself and I will catch you in the next video Peace, friends.